<clears throat> when I was in high school, I paid attention to the Lord of the Rings films for the very first time. I had just broken my arm, and actually, that's a pretty funny story. I have a video of the incident right here. Such a bad idea. Oh, speed wobbles! <laughs> oh, dude. As you can see, I deserved it. But as I was first recovering from my injury, I randomly decided to explore the story of Middle Earth a little more intentionally than I had before. I decided to binge watch all three films in the original Lord of the Rings trilogy. And for the very first time, I felt a story speak to me. I had always had an interest in film and a love for storytelling, but then and there I was experiencing something new. I was experiencing a true emotional connection to characters and themes, and I was perceiving a story with my heart, not just my mind or imagination. And so, in this first installment of a new three-part video series on The Lord of the Rings, I will begin to attempt to answer the question, why? Throughout The Lord of the Rings films, there is a consistent effort to convey character development and drama. That being said, it is apparent that the priority one for the first installment of the original trilogy, The Fellowship of the Ring, is the effort to define for itself the fellowship between characters. For this is the emotional backbone and weight of the series, the commitment that these characters hold to each other, and the means by which they are able to serve and support each other. So what I want to do in this video is explore the ways in which this task is accomplished, how the screenwriters and filmmakers establish relationship in elegant and succinct ways that speak to the audience and create real connections between characters that are believable and worthy of an audience's emotional investment. Fellowship in The Lord of the Rings is first defined by commitment and last by emotional attachment or feelings of closeness. The fellowship itself, Frodo, Aragorn, Gimli, and the lot, is not founded upon a base of affection or a sense of likeness. They are all relatively strangers to each other. Therefore, time must be taken within the narrative not only for us to be able to see these relationships grow, but also to be able to believe in their emotional impact. And this is an incredible task which the writers had to take up. Think about it. One of the most common tropes that screenwriters use to establish relationship between characters is the remember this line. Oh, what would mom and dad say? I don't know. They're, they're gone. They died when I was three, remember? You fell into that nightmare, Master, and I rescued you, remember? I cried like a baby when you played Cinderella. Peter, that was first grade. And yet, most of the characters of The Fellowship just don't have this in their back pocket. So how do you get from here... You draw far too much attention to yourself, Mr. Underhill. ...to here? For Frodo. And so this was the job of the first film, to lay the groundwork for the relationships between these characters so that we could believe in their emotional impact later in the story. There are many elements within the writing of this film that helps to define the character's fellowship. But what I feel is most important to consider is something that I will call the three-step journey of commitment, which an audience must perceive within a story in order to effectively believe in the fellowship between characters and find it to be emotionally resonant. As an audience, we must be made to buy into the commitments that characters make to each other. As such, one of the most fundamental scenes from The Fellowship of the Ring is the one where the Fellowship is officially instituted. Lord Elrond looks upon this band of diverse characters and states, You shall be the Fellowship of the Ring. And the irony here is that just a minute earlier in the same scene, And yet, we buy into the commitments that each of these characters make to each other and to Frodo. They come together under the promise to support each other and reach a common goal. 
So as an audience, we expect that this is the group that we will be following for the remainder of the film, as this scene is the screenwriter's way of telling us outright. If this scene was to be followed by another, where the group effectively falls apart or splits up, the narrative would lack focus and the audience would be reasonably frustrated at the inconsistency. And that's one of the many issues that comes with subverting audience expectations. Many think of it as edgy and innovative and always something to celebrate, but sometimes it can seriously hinder the emotional potency of a film and has the potential to make future storytelling less believable because you break trust with your audience. And so the first step on the journey of defining fellowship is the step to establish and institute commitments that an audience will know that it can trust. You state, as a screenwriter, that despite the lack of history between these characters and the lack of likeness, these characters are committing to each other, and we're going to follow that commitment throughout our story in all of its highs and lows. In this case, the classic show-don't-tell rule is absent in favor of a clear direction from the screenwriter. This is the Fellowship of the Ring, and this is the promise that has been made. And so, at approximately halfway through the film, we are presented with a bond between strangers. We recognize that a commitment to each other and the task at hand has been made, and we buy into the reality of that commitment because its purpose in the narrative was made clear to the audience with the equivalent of big red letters painted across the screen saying, this is where we are going now. And now, in order to grow our emotional investment in this group and in the relationships there, the very fabric of fellowship has to be threatened. In the same way that you cannot have faith without having doubt first, or you often cannot learn without failing first, fellowship in the Lord of the Rings is defined by the ways in which it is questioned and burdened by the effects of the ring. Such as in the growth of muscle, the fellowship must experience significant resistance in order to be strengthened. We can't truly believe in or emotionally resonate with relationships unless we know that they are real, unless we know that they can withstand their tests. So we see multiple instances of strife during the fellowship's journey, and all such instances work to wear down the group to its eventual breaking point. And in this, it is the continual oppression of the fellowship that serves to call into question the integrity of its members. This is especially true for Boromir, who proves in time to be, at least for a moment, his own antagonist. Throughout the tenure of the fellowship in this first film, we are consistently confronted with a rising and falling of tension between Boromir and the Ring. Having ulterior motives in the back of his mind, he constantly advises that they revert back to his own land of Gondor, and he deals with the temptation to take the ring for himself. Besides all of the action and tragedy, this is the central opposition that serves to define the fellowship between the characters. Lady Galadriel states this herself in this crucial scene which foreshadows the eventual climax of the Fellowship's integrity and the climax of the film. The Fellowship is breaking. It has already begun. He will try to take the ring. You know of whom I speak. One by one, it will destroy them all. Her prediction comes to fruition in this scene, when Boromir finally snaps in a way that is as threatening as it is disheartening. In effect, the whole fellowship seemingly fails swiftly as the ensuing conflict comes to a head in the film's climax. In the battle, Merry and Pippin are captured. Boromir is mortally wounded and Frodo departs from the group. It appears that the effort has all been in vain. However, in the end, it is not the physical breaking of the fellowship that defines it, but instead it is the reinforcement of the word spoken at the start of the fellowship. The commitments made between this band of strangers to destroy the One Ring. 
It is the reinforcement in the face of opposition to stay true to one another. The examples of this reinforcement are clear. I would have gone with you to the end. point to take note here is that, in the event of these tragic turn of events, Aragorn could turn back and become Strider once again. Gimli could turn back to lead his people and so could Legolas. Sam could leave Frodo, give up, and turn back. The Fellowship could fail, and it nearly does, but because of the reinforcement of the commitments that were made at the Fellowship's inception, the Fellowship remains true. I think that we can often mistake elements such as actor chemistry, or relative connected backstories, or evident emotional connection for the quality of characters' relationships. That being said, it is made apparent that the fellowship in The Lord of the Rings is not defined by the messy feelings or the petty arguments between each of the characters. It is not defined by the backstories of the characters, their personal histories with one another, or even the mistakes that they make against each other. Instead, fellowship is defined as an unbreakable bond. It is defined by the choices that these characters make for each other, and the promises that they hold to. Thus, I will contend that one of the most important things that makes the Lord of the Rings films so emotionally impactful is this final reinforcement of commitment that the characters share, the final definition of fellowship. It is the initial commitment made, the resistance against that commitment, and the eventual overcoming of that resistance in favor of commitment that gives way to a well-defined sense of fellowship that proves to be exponentially emotionally impactful and resonant for an audience collectively. You see, we don't cry at Sam's plea to Frodo to allow him to keep his promise because we ever saw these characters grow up together. We don't cry because of the chemistry between the actors, and we don't necessarily cry because we recognize that they are crying and empathize with them. We cry because we all have, in our heart of hearts, an innate desire to have someone who won't abandon us when things get hard. We need people who will stay true to their word, who won't turn back even when the road ahead looks terrifying. We cry because we long for a fellowship defined such as this, as a fulfilled commitment to each other, a promise kept, a bond unbroken. This is why the Lord of the Rings speaks to us so intensely because it defines fellowship in a way that speaks directly to our souls, in a way that provides a portrait of something that we crucially need as humans. And so, as the stage is set, this fellowship will be the foundation of all of our emotional investment moving forward. Through its final definition of fellowship, in the final moments of its first film, the Lord of the Rings becomes emotionally impactful for six more hours of story to come.